Okay, so that's the uh, grazers. Now the hunters. Yeah, and, and the hunters are being you know, much more active. Uh, and they're more the so ones than that, a grazer. more so than a grazer. That that's if you like the next step up in the food chain. Right. They're eating so the, the moving things. They're, they're eating the moving things. Right. You know, uh, and that may be the small insects. It may be the mites in the soil. Uh, you know, the springtails. Uh, it may be uh, you know another generation of or another class of nematodes. Right. You know, there there are nematodes that are actually hunters, and they will they will hunt down the. You know, they wouldn't bother with the bacteria, but a nice juicy paramecium or an amoeba. That's that's something that's uh, worth going after. Right. And why are why are the hunters good for this? You know, what role are they playing? It's beneficial. Yeah. Uh, again, they're they're helping cycle through nutrients. Right. You know, uh, they're again maintaining the balance. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, if you have if you have too many grazers, you know, the bacterial population will get depleted. We don't want that. Right. Yes. You know, the hunters help keep that in line. If there's, okay. if there's too many, you know, you know, so you'll, you'll get uh, ebbs and flows in, in soil life the same way, you know, it's, a, it's the same as the model of the, uh, the lynx and the bunny, you know, yes. rabbit population goes up, lynx population follows, and then they run out of bunnies and <laughs> population crashes. Yeah. Uh, same thing will happen in the soil. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're sort of like the, the governor, <laughs> yeah. says, yeah. you know, keeping things Okay, and so then the next, uh, and we got like three categories left here, just so people know this is going to end at some point. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't go on forever. <laughs> we, we could we could talk for hours, but we won't. So the next one is the fixers. What's a what's a fixers? Fixer? Yep, uh, and fixers, uh, they are are actually really neat because they take atmospheric nitrogen, which plants can't use. You have to remember, you know, seventy eight percent of the air we breathe is is nitrogen gas, but it's pretty inert. Plants can't use it in that form. Uh, the fixers will actually take that and convert it over into ammonium in. Right. So into a form that plants can use. Which is what we want. It's what we want. Right. Um, and there's there's two different types. There, there's free living fixers. Uh, some of those are the, the blue-green algae uh, or cyanobacteria, we call them. Uh, you know, there's other ones that are actually feeding on the... Uh, root exudates you know what the the plant roots are, are kicking out you know getting the sugar the carbohydrates from there right uh and use that as fuel like what's on a bean or a pea plant you know, legume no that's uh there will be some free living nitrogen fixing bacteria on any plant root okay right yep so on a wheat plant or a corn plant uh, or on rice you know if you're in, in the tropics on a rice plant really uh, yep Okay. Um, Interesting. I didn't know that. They don't generally provide enough to keep the plant going or to meet all of the plant's needs. Right. They have some. They're right. there, but they, you know, we, uh, and, and maybe we just haven't taken full advantage of them. Uh, it, it probably is more important in some of the uh, perennial systems or the forested systems especially if they're very, very low nutrient to start with. And that's the only place you get nutrients. Right. But that's, that's, you know, in a garden, they're there, but they don't do a whole lot. The ones that do, you know, if you like are turbocharged are the, the symbiotic nitrogen okay. fixing bacteria. And those are the ones in the nodules with the peas and the beans. Is that your next category? Symbionts? Uh, they're actually, we we kind of cross over there because there's okay. there's two types of symbionts. Okay. Let's, let's yeah. So so, nit the, so nitrogen fixing bacteria, the the symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria with the legumes, uh, they are forming an association with the, those legume plants. They form nodules where you've got a high concentration of those those nitrogen fixing bacteria, and the the plant is pumping sugar in there and getting uh, ammonium back, getting nitrogen back. Right. You know, uh, and so for a bean plant or a pea plant, if it's well nodulated, you don't need to add any nitrogen fertilizer. You don't need to add any manure. It will produce its own nitrogen from the soil. Right. Which is great. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. If I ever have like bad results in a garden bed, I'll plant beans the following year because um, I think, well, 
that's going to work at least, you know, so that's fixers. And then there's symbionts, which we sort of Sym touched symbionts. On. Yeah. So we touched on, we touched on the, the symbiotic legumes, uh, or, you know, the nodules, which is a, one form of symbiosis. Another one is, is the mycorrhizal fungi. Okay. Yes. And then this is a, a huge one, lot, lots and lots of chatter about mycorrhiza. And that's really fungi that the hyphae colonize the roots and return for some of the sugars from the plants. They're transferring water and they're transferring nutrients into the root. Right. Uh, so in essence, if you've got lots of mycorrhiza, you have expanded the root rooting area by tenfold. Yes. Now, those uh, mycorrhizal networks, uh, they're pretty fragile. So if you go in and you work the soil, you know, if you rototill the soil, you, you break up any mycorrhiza that's there. Right. You know, and then it, it has to sort of regrow from scratch. Right. Uh, if you've got a tree, you know, pine trees, oak trees, maple trees, they'll have very extensive mycorrhizal networks that expand the root system of those trees because they're there permanently. Yes. You know, uh, so in a garden that we don't do, you know, much soil disturbance, we'll have a healthy mycorrhizal community. You know, so they'll, they will actually help to feed the plants and keep going. So that's, that's one of the, one of the great things about mulching rather than, than rototilling. Right. Yes. Well, that's, you know, Odd argument that I get sometimes people will say, and these tend to be permaculture gardeners. Um, and I consider myself, you know, at least an enthusiast in that area. Um, I, I see a certain logic to it. Um, not a disciple, mm -hmm. right? Just, you know, just, just a one more good idea, then we'll see where it right. goes. But they'll say, Hey, you know, um, we don't need to do um, crop rotation because look at your perennials, you don't rotate them and they do fine. And one of the counter arguments I make is that, yes, but those things are tapped into these massive mycorrhizal networks. So, I mean, number one, the root systems of a perennial gets bigger. The, the root system itself gets bigger every bigger year. Bigger and bigger, yeah. So the plants basically, it's finding new soil. So, I mean, it's not being rotated, but the roots are literally getting more, you know, they're just expanding. On top of that, you've got these mature mycorrhizal networks attached to those roots. So it's a different category as opposed to like planting some, you know, tropical plant that's got no business living in Canada, like a <laughs> tomato. Um, you know, I mean, it's just a different sort of situation. Um, it's, it's a different situation. It's, uh, and it actually gets into the, the last category of, of the pathogens okay. where if you're continually growing the same plant in the same place, you'll build up population of pathogens that are specific to that plant. Right. Uh, so if you're going to control plant diseases, going to a totally different species will help to mitigate that. It sort of says, okay, we'll, we'll grow tomatoes one year, we'll build up a population of tomato pathogens, we'll plant onions the next year. Tomato pathogens can't live on onions, they, so they die out, they starve. Yes, yeah. Uh, and doing that, same thing, and you know, it means you have to be careful not to uh, follow your tomatoes with potatoes because yes. they're the same family, the same group of pathogens. Eggplant and peppers. Eggplant, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there, there is always a population of pathogens. I uh, bacteria, I, I think, are uh, opportunists. Right. Uh, and if there's if, the, if you give them an opportunity, they will take advantage of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of the other things. And, and, and different pests as well. And different pests as well. I, yeah. I, so, so if we've got, yeah, if we've got too simple a system, uh, you know, we'll build up uh, harmful nematode populations, like the root knot, root lesion or the root knot nematodes. Right. Uh, or we'll, we'll, we'll build up pathogenic bacteria. Right. Or we'll build up pathogenic, you know, the verticillium fungi, That's those types of things. I mean, perennials are not immune to pathogens and not immune to disease, but it's it's possible that, you know, most plants that have evolved to be perennials are probably a little bit more 
you know, you think of like a lot of your, your annuals, they're you know, almost adapted to being eaten and crapped out somewhere else. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, a, uh, you know, <laughs> so they're, yeah, yeah. Like they're just naturally being uh, rotated whether they like it or not, because they're, they're going in and they're coming out. So, or the <laughs> seeds, you know, the seeds are, are broadcast by winds or things mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. that, you know, it's okay, I'm growing here, but I'm going to, next year I'm going to grow way over there where the wind took me sort of thing. <laughs> you know, east of here <laughs> sort of thing. Um, I, I, I like to use the analogy that uh, yeah, Mother Nature always wins, but she doesn't care about us at all. No, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're not part of the equation. <laughs> uh, as much as we try to make ourselves part of the equation.